Hi there and welcome to another Tommy Emmanuel tutorial, this time for Mombasa. Before I continue, I first want to welcome both Fabian and Joseph to the Patreon credit roll. Uh, there is also a PayPal donate link from now on. I got more and more questions from people asking how they could make a contribution to the channel without actually joining up on Patreon. So that possibility is there now as well. However, if you're looking for notation or tablature files, as well as early access to other videos, then Patreon is still the way to go. Mombasa is an early Tommy Emmanuel song. It's on his only album, his very first solo acoustic record, and that is where I learned it originally from. So I've been playing this song for a number of years, and what happens, automatically you start playing around certain parts. So it is inevitable that if you go through the tutorial, you'll sometimes see me do some things that are just a little bit different than what is notated down in the tab. This is because I'm doing these tutorials mostly from memory and then these things just sort of happen. However, when in doubt, the tablature is always a good guide to get everything done completely. That, together with the explanation I'll be given, should be more than enough information for you to have a good chance of tackling this song all the way to the end. Also, a few things turned up while recording the tutorial. First off, one of my cameras wasn't in the right setting, so this one is in HD instead of 4K. Secondly, there were a few very, very heavy rain showers going on outside, so you might hear some background noise while I'm explaining certain things. And lastly, there is a strange buzzing sound in my guitar whenever I'm playing around the seventh fret. Didn't notice this while I was recording the tutorial, but it certainly is there. Luckily, it's only noticeable during the explanation of the bridge. That being said, let's get to work. All you need is a guitar in standard tuning and a plectrum. Make sure it's a fairly solid plectrum. Anything that drops below one millimeter is probably too soft for this type of playing. Now, I'm going to head straight into the song, the intro first, and we're going to look at everything part by part. Here we go, first the intro. didn't seem too difficult. Now, this is by far the easiest part. We're starting, let's go over the uh, fingerings first, with an E chord, just a regular open E chord, then to an E chord with a G sharp in the bass. I'm using my ring finger on the fourth fret, index finger second fret on the D string, and then pinky fourth fret on the G string. Tommy uses his middle finger and his ring finger. Um, which you will also have to do a bit further down the road in the song. There is a fingering where you have to do this. But for the intro, I think this is just a little bit easier. So I'm using ring finger, index finger, pinky. But whatever feels right, if you want to use the middle finger, index finger, ring finger, then, then just as fine. Moving to an A chord with an added ninth. So open A string and an added ninth chord on top. 7th fret on the D string with the ring finger, 6th fret on the G string with the middle finger, and then in two open strings. Um, I'm using the wrong fingering here. I usually play this using the middle finger and the index finger, like this. And then you're moving to a eight, added ninth chord with a B note in the bass. You can do this by using the thumb over the side of the neck on the 7th fret low E string. Or you could just swap out the middle finger to the low E string and add in the ring finger. Sounds exactly the same, you're not doing anything wrong. To the picking part, now Tommy plays the same arpeggio all the way through, sometimes with a little embellishment. You're starting out on the E chord. You're playing down on the low E bass note, down on the D string and then up, strumming upward on the uh, top strings of the chord. You might ask the question, why are we playing that uh, A string as well? It's just for safety, that if you miss the D string and play the A string uh, by accident, then the note will still sound as if it's in the chord um, and nothing sounds wrong. So we're playing down, down, up on the E chord and then the exact same thing on the E over G sharp chord, down, down, up 
that the timing of both chords is a bit different. The E chord starts on the beat and the E over G sharp chord starts in between the beats. One, two, three, four. On the fourth beat, a little percussive click on the beat. One, two, three, four. Nothing too hard, don't smash the strings into the guitar, just a light, light click. One, two, three, four. Then straight after that percussive click, an open A string in front of the first beat. One, two, three, four, one. That's the timing where that open A bass string should land. Then on that A chord, the first time around, you're doing the exact same thing. Downstroke on the bass string, downstroke, seventh fret on the D string, and then up strumming, strumming upward, sorry, up strumming. It doesn't seem to be a word, but I keep using it all the time. So a strum upward on the rest of the chord. One, two, three, four, one, two. What is really important, make sure that A bass note is rings out as a full quarter note across the bar line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Adding in that last chord isn't too difficult. The timing is the same as in the first bar. Adding in the B bass note, but the picking pattern is just a little bit different. Down, down, up, down, the first bass note again is in front of the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's put that all together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Without accounting. Don't pay too much attention when you're doing those uh, strums at the exact amount of strings that are notated down in the tab. All you're aiming for is playing the middle of the chord and the top strings of the chord. Whether it's two strings, three strings when you're strumming in the upper direction, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's more of a feel than having the exact same or the exact amount of strings each and every time. So don't, don't sweat it too much on that part. The second time around, we're just playing one little fill over that A chord. We're basically playing the same thing over the A chord. We are filling in that gap of, of that um, quarter note that's bound across the bar. So we're doing one, two, three, four, one, two, so just three, Four, one, two, three, four. We're well, basically playing the same melody. If you finger the, the, the last chord with the thumb over the side of the neck, it even looks the same every time. You don't even have to move anything, it's just adding in the bass note. So, and that's the only fill you'll be playing apart from the very last bar. So, let's take a look at it from the beginning. Long A bass note. I'm going to fill that in. And a really simple but really effective. Uh, little break on the last bar, just an accent on the first beat, on the E chord, percussive tap, going to the E over G sharp chord, and then the A chord. Timing is a bit peculiar, so you got three, four, one, two, three, four, with the A chord on the fourth beat. What is really important is you keep that E. Uh, last A at the ninth chord ringing out for five full beats so make sure it lasts as long as it has to don't be too eager and jump into the core uh, into the first first just a little bit too soon so what you get is one two three four one two three four and then you're 
half into the first first. So make sure that last chord rings out long enough. That was the whole intro. I'm going to put that all together really slowly and then we're heading straight into the verse. to the verse. Now, there's a lot going on here, so let's have a slow look, really methodical, and see what is happening. First up, the opening melody. Now, make sure you get this into your fingers really, really well, because this will pop up a lot of times during the song. So, if you work uh, this right away, in the right manner, with the right fingerings, things are going to get a lot easier throughout the rest of the song. We're starting out with an open E bass string. We're going to mute that with the picking hand, and then a melody in sixth, starting on the fourth fret, ring index finger and pinky on the fourth fret, on the G and high E string, to the second fret, and then to the first fret and an open E string. I'm used to playing this with the pinky and the ring finger. You could also use the middle finger and the ring finger, as long as you end up with the index finger and the open string. Tommy uses hybrid picking to play this, so the plectrum for the lower sounding note, the middle finger for the higher sounding note. Two, fourth fret with the ring finger on the low E string, and an open B string to a little bar on the second fret, and an open A string, playing the B string again, using hybrid picking with the plectrum and the middle finger. Most of what follows is, again, with only the plectrum. Again, to the same uh, E over G sharp chord as in the intro, but as I mentioned then, now you'll be using this fingering with the middle finger, index finger and the ring finger, because that will make it easier to switch over to the next chord, which is an F sharp dominant seventh chord, so you will just be moving down the ring finger one fret and swapping over the index finger and the middle finger both to the second fret on the low E string and the D string. One important note is that if you're playing that uh, high sounding open E string, at the right before you transfer to that F sharp chord, make sure that open E string keeps ringing out. This is the thing that binds the chord change together. So this will make sure that if you're, as you're moving down to that F sharp chord, as that open high E string keeps ringing out, this is what will make the transition sound really smooth instead of choppy. Plectrum all the way up to that high E string again. Now for this arpeggio, again with the plectrum, low E string, D string, G string, high E string, Tommy sometimes likes to leave out the note on the D string and play an open B string instead. So instead of playing this, Tommy will start the arpeggio on the bass string and then head straight for the G string get that sound. So it's the same fingering, or it sounds a little bit different. So he's, he usually throws those 
two uh, types of flavors, those two types of chord sounds. He throws them around all the time in this song without really any method behind it. So it's just what he would like to hear at that point. Let's put those bars back to back. Leaving out the rest of the chord to the middle finger, sliding up to the fourth fret and then heading straight for a bar on the second fret. That's quite a quick position shift, moving to a bar at the second fret, then playing the bass note with the plectrum playing the A chord on top, so this is again an A over B chord, playing the chord on top with the middle finger and the ring finger on the picking hand, little percussive tap, adding in the pinky and the ring finger on the fourth fret, back to the fingers and back to the plectrum on the bass note. We're not using a bar to play that B chord because we're in need of the open E string right away and using a bar here would make that really difficult. Two times the open string and back to the fourth fret on the B string. And that's the first four bars and we're already uh, ready to start into the first repetition. But first those first four bars back to back. are going to repeat the first three bars with one little variation a second time around Tommy doesn't just play the open E bass string he likes to add in the second fret on the D string as well just to give it a little bit more momentum up until that point it's the exact same thing as the very first time finger pulling off to an open B string again to an A chord just a regular bar on the second fret and to a B dominant seventh chord we're not playing the pinky up top if you want to have some extra safety just go ahead but we don't need it at the moment again plectrum middle finger and ring finger hybrid picking Let's have a look at those first eight bars. So that is the full eight bars up until this point. Now on to one of the tricky bits. A pumping bass section using nothing but a plectrum on the bass string and hybrid picking all the way across the top strings. So what we're doing is we're playing the, the open A bass string all the way with the plectrum while using quite heavy palm muting to keep the strings volume down so we have a bit of a chance of getting that melody to sound out on top. In the beginning, there's probably nothing else to do than to try to outline each and every note on that bass line and just try to get it mechanically incorporated into your fingers before uh, speeding this section up. I'm going to show this really slowly. We're starting with an, a little A triad on top, so middle finger, sixth fret on the G string, and then index finger in a little bar across the high B and E strings. I'm, at this point you can play it all with the middle finger or all with the ring finger. And then two fingers, middle finger and ring finger, while stretching to the ninth fret with the ring finger and the pinky. So in 
and try to get the volume of those notes even. That's the hardest part. And we're all, always returning to that high A string as a pedal tone. Same trick, the A note just keeps going on and we're moving from the pinky both and the ring finger both on the 9th fret to the ring finger on the 8th fret on the G string, middle finger 7th fret on the B string. To the same A chord we started out with, really slowly, back to back. If you want to and go full Tommy Emmanuel, you can even add in a little hammer on before you return to that A chord. Uh, that's something really typical of him. So, one more time, really slowly. bar at the fourth fret, playing again with the middle finger and ring finger, the chord again on the G and B string, and then we're going to move the plectrum to the low E string using the same trick, just pumping that bass note while using heavy palm muting on the low E string this time. So we're starting out with nothing but the bar. Again, returning to the high E string as a pedal tone, pinky and ring finger, pinky on the 7th fret on the B string, ring finger on the 6th fret, moving to the middle finger on the 5th fret and for the rest nothing but the bar, and then adding in the ring finger on the seventh fret on the A string, and again hammering on, same hammer on as we did in the previous section, to the fifth fret on the G string, creating a G sharp dominant seventh chord. And that's the only time where that low, pumping low bass note drops out, just for a second. Three, four. Just leave that chord ringing open. This is what is notated in the tab, but it's a bit different every time around. So if you want something really uh, to grab onto, then just stick to this. But Tommy plays this a little bit different every time. tap on the first uh, on the fourth beat sorry let me put that back to back so that's the full part that's the full uh, hybrid picking bass part with the pumping bass line now after that percussive hit, we're heading into a bit of a funky section. With a lot of percussive hits, so percussive taps on the guitar, sorry. So we're heading, we're coming out of that uh, pumping uh, bass section, percussive click, and then a really quick slide from the eighth fret to the seventh fret, three, four, Easy enough. Open A string, open E string, three, four. Tap, then to a diminished voicing, index finger fifth fret on the D string, ring finger sixth fret on the G string, middle finger sixth fret on the low E string. And again to an open E string. And again a tap, back to back, three, four. To an E chord with a B in the bass, pinky 7th fret on the low E string, a bar across the 4th fret from the high E string, 
I do it to all the way to the D string, but actually the uh, to the G string would be fine. I'm adding in the ring finger on the sixth fret of the D string and the middle finger fifth fret on the B string. Now this is a bit of a hefty chord, but make sure your thumb is nice down low so you can get this down. It's almost like a C chord, only with the bass moved to the low E string. Three, four. down the third this is quite fast to an F sharp chord in this case you will probably have to use the thumb over the side of the neck if you want to avoid this altogether I didn't really find an alternative fingering because after playing that third down below you adding in the bass note and then you will need the pinky and the ring uh, sorry the pinky and the index finger to play a hammer on and pull off melody on top playing that F chord and then one of those quick Tommy Emmanuel embellishment pull-offs on top so you're starting uh, with the index finger on the second fret but you're pulling off away as soon as you hear that F sharp sounding out on top hammer on pull off and then just all pull-offs going back down pinky on the B string to the second fret with the index finger to the open string. So you see each and every digit is at work. So the thumb, the middle finger and ring finger are keeping down the chord and the index finger and the pinky are playing the melody on top. So there's not really room for an alternative fingering in this case. To an A chord. We already played that part at the end of the, the previous section. And that's the fill Tommy uses to head into the next verse. Again, careful with the timing. So one, two, three, four, one. That low E bass note is landing in front of the beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Let me add in the next melody so you can uh, hear how this clicks together into the next verse. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So that's how those two parts connect. That's how that fill is used to pull that bass note forward, just one eighth note, and it really sets up a bit of a quick variation on the next verse, but something that is again really, really efficient to making the sound a bit different instead of playing the same thing each and every time around. I'm going to play first that last section, starting from the pumping bass note all the way up to this point, then a recap of the whole verse, and then we're going to continue through the rest of the song. Here we go. So first, that pumping bass part. second part, the second eight bars, of eight bars of the first verse. Now let's put that all together really slowly and then the good news is a lot of what you need to play the rest of the song is already here. It's all in the first verse. Everything else are a bit of different chord forcings, a few very very little different technical tricks but most of what you need is already in your fingers mind. Here we go, the full first verse.
first verse. And the end of verse 1 seems like a good place to conclude the first part of the tutorial. Part 2 is right here on YouTube and in that part we'll be having a look at verse B, the bridge as well as the ending. See you there.